Hello everyone, my name is Damien, and this is going to be another episode of Beginner's Java. This is going to be a difficult episode. It might be two parts, or I might just make it really long, which I don't like doing, so let's jump right into it. This is episode 14, Introduction to Arrays. Arrays are the single hardest thing to get straight in your head if you've never done them. The reason behind this is because, you know, you don't think about it the way that it might be. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to first designate myself a large block of comment for this. Uh, and I'm going to sort of draw out what an array looks like in my head. So an array is a container of like variables. And what I mean by that is inside of this container, we can have variables or objects, which we'll get into later, of one type, meaning we can have ints, uh, an array of ints, an array of doubles. And this can be wrapper classes too. So if we want an array of double, we can do that. We can do an array of strings. You know, and so all of these S's should be, you know, in parentheses just because I, I am trying to show that the primitive does not get an S after it or anything. Um, so here's sort of how an array might look. So let's say that we have an array of ints, and inside of that array is the numbers 1, 5, 6, uh, 10, 12, 14, 25. Okay, so with that said, we have what? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. Okay, so here's how our array would look. So I'm going to draw it out something like this. So each one of these is going to get two spaces uh, after it. So 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2. Okay, I think that's right. So right in the middle of each, we're going to put the number. 5, 6, 10, 12, 14, 25. Okay, and I did have an extra. So that is all an array is. So let me add in a quick little note beneath. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six. So this one through six, or zero through six rather that I put in there is known as the index of the array. And so the index is how we tell people where something is in the array. So just like an index of a book, the index of the array is how the computer understands where a certain element is. So in this case, let's give this array the name of my ints. And so my ints has these numbers in it, one, five, six, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if we were looking at my ints and then the value of zero, so looking at the zeroth place or the first place, if you want to think of it like that, we would get the value one. So I'm just going to say equals equals one. So if we were to look again at similarly my ints of one, and when I put these uh, square brackets around it and say of, a lot of people do that. So when we look at my ints of one, which is actually the second number in the array, we see five. And so a lot of these things are, are a little confusing uh, especially the zero indexing, as it's called, meaning that our, our index starts at zero and not one. But once you get used to them, it'll make a lot more sense. So now let's look at the actual syntax behind how an array is set up. So we start by saying int, and then we add those square brackets, and then we say my ints equals new uh, and then we'll say int, and then we'll do, how many do we have there? Seven. Okay, 
So that's it. That is our statement. Now there is one little thing I can mention here. Uh, I, I sort of hesitate to do so. But instead of putting our, our bracket there, we can put it after our variable name. Some people do it this way, but it's generally frowned upon. I want to let you guys know that yes, it will work, but a lot of places do not handle their ar arrays like that. So the better way to think about it is to think you have an array of integers. You do not have an array of my ints. So a lot of people do it uh, like this. The vast majority do it with their integer declaration like that. So from there, we can uh, either go ahead and do these all out one by one, or alternatively, we can come back up here and we can set the equal sign equal to the variables that we wanted. If we wanted to, to set that array manually, uh, we could do that by going line by line and saying, you know, um, my ints, you know, and then doing the, the one and then equals one. But instead, we're just going to enter in all the values. And sometimes you're able to do this, but typically you are not. So it works out great that I'm teaching a tutorial and not actually doing work on this right now. So we have my ints, which now holds these values. Um, if I were to set up a breakpoint, I could show you that, but you guys will have to take my word for it here. So the way that we output everything in an array is actually really easy. We do int i equals zero. I always use i as an iterator. Uh, it's something I do. I apologize if that drives anyone crazy. Uh, we'll do i is less than my ints dot length. Ah, if I could type, I certainly would. And then i plus plus. So what this means is while i is less than the length of our array, meaning the number of things in it, we're going to keep outputting. So we'll do system.out.println. And what we're going to print out is, you know what? I'm actually going to do this the right way. We're going to do um, the value of my ints plus i plus quote space is, and then we'll do plus my ints of i. So in this case, this will sort of reinforce what I said earlier. And so we'll give that a, a run. And so this is what I was telling you guys above. Uh, maybe I can get both on the screen at the same time if I delete a couple of these and then sort of pull my, my compilation window up just a little. So this is what I was saying. You'll see that in the zeroth position, we have the number one in the uh, first position, which is actually the second number. We have five. So it really correlates with what I said right here. So if you start thinking about this as a container that starts at the number zero rather than at the number one, you're going to have a very easy time with it. If you think about it any other way, you will have a very hard time with it. So there is one final thing that we can do. Uh, I get this one a lot. Let's see how we are for time. OK, yeah, we've got plenty. Um, what I get a lot is I want my user to be able to enter any amount of numbers that they want. And this is a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea for a hundred reasons. But I'm going to show you guys the way that you can do that. So what you can do is you can say system.out.println. How many numbers would you like to enter? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to, well, first I'm going to comment all this out. I'll leave it in so you guys have that for when you look through the source code. And we're going to do int uh, num values equals uh, input dot next int. And so that's going to allow the user to enter it. So what we're going to do from there 
is we're going to enter int my ints equals uh, new int my, uh, num values. And this is something that's technically valid. It's probably going to ask to, uh, no, no, there we go, for me to make that match, which is fine. Um, and then it's going to tell us it's not being used. That's why it's underlined in yellow. Uh, Eclipse is very impatient. And so what we need to do now is we need to load that with values. So we're going to go for int i equals zero. i is less than my ints uh, dot length i plus plus. And then for each one, you're going to go system.out.println. Enter a value for number. And if you want to start at 1 rather than 0, just be aware that you're not actually entering in the number 1. But you can do that if you want. So you can do enter for number. And then you can just do plus uh, parentheses i plus 1. And so then you could do that. And then just do uh, my ints of i equals input dot next int. And so this is technically how you could do something like that, letting your user go through and enter stuff. And then you could iterate through their loop with a, a four. Um, so let's again do that real quick for int i equals zero, i is less than my ints dot length i plus plus system dot out dot println the value of my ints uh, of here. Why don't I just copy paste that because I already did that once. And so let's try this. We'll save, we'll run, and I'll say I want to enter three numbers. I'll enter 104, I'll enter 62, and I'll enter 12. And so there are my three values. So I hope that this has proved valuable for you guys. Um, arrays are very hard to sort of understand, so I hope that you guys will take a lot of time to play around with this. Um, there are projects that you guys might run into that use two-dimensional arrays. My only point of advice to you guys is if you run into one, run away. Two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional arrays are extremely difficult to wrap your head around. With that being said, I hope that this lesson has sort of benefited you guys. I am Damien. Uh, please ask any questions below. This is a hard lesson to wrap your head around. Uh, if you know, you didn't get it, or if you didn't sort of uh, understand why I was doing something, or how something sort of worked, I will be more than happy to try to explain it. Thank you so much, and have a good uh, evening, and a happy holiday. Bye-bye.